Let's talk now about setting goals. Of all the things that really helped transform my life, when I was 25 years old and met my mentor, that original mentor, Mr. Earl Schof, uh, goal setting really did wonders for me. The subject came up when uh, Mr. Schof said to me, Mr. Rohn, uh, let me see your current list of goals. And he said, let's go over them. He said, I've got some experience and let's talk about it. Maybe I can give you some help. And I said to him, I don't have a list. He said, wow. If you don't have a list of your goals, he said, I can probably guess your bank accounts within your bank account within a few hundred dollars, uh, which he did. And that got my attention. So here was my response. You mean to tell me if I had a list of my goals, it would make a difference in my bank account? He said, a drastic difference. So that got my attention. I thought, well, I've got to learn how to set goals. And uh, when I learned it, it changed my life forever. Now I've been teaching it now all these years, trying to help people get a better vision of the future. Okay, so make this note, the future's where we're going. You know, the past is where we've been, the present is where we are, and the future is where we're going. And if we can capture this moment in time from our past to now, and then from now to a future more well-designed, uh, with better objectives and better purpose uh, for ourselves, our family, our business, our investments, everything else, then this, this moment in time will have become extremely valuable. So let me give you first what really affects us all. Number one, we're affected by the environment in which we live. We're affected by the physical environment. I was challenged way back in those early days, why not make the environment better everywhere you go? I learned, mama taught, you know, turn off the lights when you check out of your hotel and you leave the room before you leave, turn out the lights. And I thought, why do that? And here's what she said, to make a contribution that's so easy. Wow. And if you could make a contribution that is so easy, that didn't cost you any money and didn't cost you any time, you know, didn't cost you a, a piece of your life, why not make the contribution that's easy? Because if everybody did it, think of how much we would conserve. Someone says, well, yes, but the hotel benefits if you turn out all the lights. And here's the answer that sophisticated people always have. Who cares who benefits? If it benefits the hotel and if everybody did it, probably the cost of the hotel room would come down. So every benefit you can give, every benefit you can share, because here's what happens. If you learn to give, you will what? Receive. Maybe not in the manner in which you gave, maybe not in like kind. Uh, someone will save energy for you because you saved energy for them. But in some mysterious ways, it always comes back to us. If you give, you will receive. In fact, here's what it says, that for the uneducated is a little bit strange. It says it's better to give than it is to receive. Now, see, if you didn't understand, you would say, that doesn't quite make sense. Surely it would be better to receive than to give, and the answer is no. It is much better to give than to receive. And here's why. It's what we call being in having intelligent self-interest. Nothing wrong with self-interest as long as you do it the intelligent way. Here's the key, giving, it's better to give than it is to receive because giving starts the receiving process. So to act intelligently in your own self-interest, which is good, it's much better to give than it is to receive. Because if all of you do, all you do is receive, that may be very limited. But if you give and giving starts the receiving process coming your way from unknown 
resources and from unknown places, back it comes around to you because you became a giver. That's one of the unique mysteries of life. We give to receive, and it's better to give than it is to receive. So that's what Mama said, turn out the lights, make a contribution. Why not make the easy ones? Here's what else. We talked about it at our lunch break today to those who were there. It raises your self-esteem plus your self-respect that you do things that the average person doesn't do. Maybe if they were taught, they would. Maybe if somebody mentioned it, they would. But it's easy for most everybody to just go on their way. And if they're not interrupted by a good idea that says, hey, it's so easy to make a contribution, this one would be easy. Turn out the lights when you leave the hotel room and make a contribution. That's interesting. Next is the phrase in terms of environment, always leave something better than you found it. I talked to a man one time who rented out a long list of uh, of apartments. And he said, Mr. Owen, you wouldn't believe it, but when somebody rents an apartment, they usually leave it worse than when they rented it. I said, you've got to be kidding. He said, no. A high percentage of people leave it trashed. If they stay six months or stay one year, they leave it trashed. Not just not better, but trashed. I said, that's impossible. Why would anyone do that? Mama said to me, no, leave it, what? Better than you found it. See, that's just a commitment to your own self-esteem. And why not do it if it makes a contribution to your self-esteem? It's called intelligent self-interest. Intelligent self-interest. Self-interest says, I wish to be ruler over many. And intelligent self-interest says, I understand how to do that. Be faithful when the amounts are small. If you'll take care of the few, we will someday give you a position of very high importance over many. But if you don't be disciplined when the amounts are small, why would we trust you when the amounts are large? Brian mentioned that earlier. Why would, why would life give you a fortune to manage if you couldn't manage the gifts of a few. Interesting philosophy to consider, okay? Your own self-interest, leave the contribution. I'm even aware of it when I leave a restaurant and I get me a toothpick, right? And you take off the little cellophane off the toothpick. It's easy to throw it by the cash register, right, or somewhere where it looks like other people have done the same. Mama said, put it in your pocket. Somebody says, wow, a little piece of cellophane, what difference does it make? It doesn't make that much difference, only in your self-respect. Take your trash home and deposit it. How much does it cost to clean up the trash on the highways in America? Mega, mega, mega millions. Wouldn't people take home their own trash and deposit it there rather than scatter it on the highways across America? And the answer is most people do not. It's so easy to throw it out the window. But now add this, it's so easy to keep it in your car and have a few more points in your favor on self-esteem, feeling good about yourself doing things that most people don't do. If everybody differed, did it, what a different country we would have. But it doesn't really matter. You say, well, if everybody's gonna do it, why shouldn't I do it? And the answer is for your own dignity and for your own self-esteem, you do things that most other people allow themselves to do that you don't do. And uh, so when I talk about the environment, now we're affected by the political environment and the social environment, and we're affected by the economy environment, 